Um, and when I uh, talk, talk to my students about 1619, and I did even before the 1619 project, but I had to do it more pointedly after the 1619 project because of all the nonsense that that engendered. Uh, starting with, how can you begin in 1619 and ignore 167? Because starting in 167, when, when white people were servants, indentured servants in Virginia, who could be bought, they were chattels who could be bought and sold, who could be won and lost in card games and so on. Uh, starting there lets you see that the uh, uh, decision to uh, use Africans as slaves came in that context. And it didn't become racial, wasn't even defined that way in, in the laws of Virginia until much later on. Well, from, from 1619, uh, when do you first even have a slave code in Virginia? Not till the 1660s. And uh, I, this is a, a, a misconception that I think has become very widespread, is likely to become even more widespread because the New York Times has made such a mascot of it. But uh, if you historicizing that process means that you have to understand everybody who was part of it. it. And it wasn't just people from Africa. It wasn't just people from Europe. It wasn't just um, indigenous Americans. You have to understand all of those and you have to understand why it was necessary to have people forced to work for somebody else. Why do you need to do that? If you have a place where anybody who wants land can get land, anybody who wants to grow whatever the crop is can grow it, why do you end up having indentured servitude and slavery? Um, and I put this question to my students and they flounder around about it because they have all sorts of notions of what comes naturally to human beings. And um, I tell them, well, ultimately there, there are only three ways you can get somebody else to work for you. Uh, for your benefit. You can persuade them to do it, you can pay them to do it, or you can force them to do it. Uh, and it is very difficult to pay people enough to want to do that if what they want is to farm their own land and there's nothing to stop them from doing that uh, and nothing to stop them from appropriating the proceeds. As soon as you historicize it that way, the, uh, Slavery becomes part of, of a, a historical process that um, does, it doesn't have anything to do with race as Americans like to understand it. And the process by which, and I, I tell my students, you know, uh, people from Africa didn't become black people until they came here. But for that matter, Europeans were not Europeans. <laughs> until they came here.